Your Old Testament is written in Hebrew. Your New Testament is written in Greek. But there is a Greek version of the Old Testament called the Septuagint. So sometimes it's good for us to look at what the Greek says because uh, in that way you know that uh, uh, what, what corresponds to this word here is the same word here and you can find the Hebrew word here. Therefore, it's the same truth. Amen. Uh, you, you will see more as I go along. So here, the word gives light. It's actually in, in the Septuagint, in the Greek, it's actually fortizo. The very same word we saw just now in uh, Ephesians 1, verse 18. The eyes of your heart, your understanding being fortizo, being enlightened. Here's the same word. Amen. The entrance of your words gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. That tells us that this pure wisdom and revelation operates with the Word of God. It is, it is not apart from the Word of God. It is with the Word of God. Amen. Do you remember Joshua? Uh, in Joshua 1 verse 8, God says, This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, God said to him, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it, for then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Notice that Joshua, uh, when God said this to him, obviously he was reading the book of the law. And what they had back then, Joshua, the Bible they had back then is the Torah, the first five books of Moses. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. That's what Joshua was meditating on and, and reading when the Lord says, this book, notice the word this, Hazir. In the Hebrew, it's Hazir, this. He was reading it, obviously forgot to say, this book of the law that you're reading, this book specific, this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth but you shall meditate therein. It's not enough just to read. God says, you must meditate therein day and night. But remember this, friend. The Bible says that Joshua, at this point, Moses has just died. And before Moses died, Moses laid his hands on Joshua. And Joshua was full of the spirit of wisdom. For Moses had laid his hands on him. Remember, Moses laid his hands on Joshua. And now, when Moses is dead, the Bible says Joshua was full of the spirit of wisdom. Amen. For Moses laid his hands on him. And that was the closing chapters of Deuteronomy when, when that was mentioned. The very next book is this chapter 1 of Joshua. And here's where we are. It's not enough just to have the spirit of wisdom. We need to open up the book. Amen. Uh, God, God operates with these two means of bringing wisdom into our life, bringing His own vision into our lives. Amen. Praise the Lord. For then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So back to this verse in Psalms 119, it says, the entrance of your words. The word, the word entrance in the Hebrew is petak. Petak actually means open the door. Today, when you petak the door, they say, open the door. So uh, in the uh, other versions like ESV, it says, unfolding of your words gives light. In the uh, Young's, it says the opening, which is more accurate, the petak, the opening of your words enlighteneth, instructing the simple. So every time you, you hear the Word of God, as I open the Word of God, I'm, I'm doing that right now. I'm opening the Word of God to you. Amen. So that you won't be carnally minded. Amen. But be spiritually minded. Every time your mind is set on the Word of God, you meditate on God's Word. Amen. You are actually setting your mind on the Spirit. And to be spiritually minded is life and peace, shalom, well-being, health, wholeness is all in that word, shalom. Amen. Amen. Praise God. So we see that even though Joshua was full of the spirit of wisdom, he did not neglect the Bible. He did not neglect the Word of God. Amen. He opened it when God spoke to him and said, this book of the law, obviously he was reading it then, shall not depart from your mouth, Joshua, but you shall meditate therein day and night, Notice day and night, that you may observe to do according. Now watch that, may observe to do. That you may observe to do. God could have said, you shall meditate on it day and night, that you may do all that is written therein. No need to say observe to do, right? But God says here, that you may observe. In Hebrew, shamer, observe, watch, see, watch. Amen? To do. In other words, when you meditate on God's Word, take a passage of Scripture or take a verse and you meditate on it, sooner or later, you will see how to apply it. Amen. Then you shall make your way prosperous. 
then you shall have good success. Notice, you meditate on God's Word. Actually, meditation here is the word haga in Hebrew, which is muttering with your mouth. I mean, the first line tells you that this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth. Amen? Amen? Not just from your mind. We think of meditation only from in the area of the mind, but your mouth. Amen? Biblical meditation is not shutting your mouth and just being in your mind. Amen? Or blanking your mind out. All right? It is actually filling your mouth with God's Word and thinking about what you are muttering. Haga means muttering. Amen? Amen. Even in the wee hours of the night, if you can't sleep, it's the best time. I love to, if I can't sleep, whether it's the devil causing it or whether it's stress or whatever it is, amen. If I can't sleep, I tell you this, I just meditate on the Word of God. Amen. As I meditate, I mutter the, those verses that come up. You can memorize Joshua 1, 8 if you want. You can memorize Psalms 1 uh, about the, the man who meditates. His delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law doth he meditate. Again, the word there is haga, day and night. And as you meditate, you will observe. You will see the wisdom in that passage. You will see. That means it will come in a picture form. Amen. You will be able to see it. How? With the eyes of your heart. So it's not enough just to uh, ask, ask God for the spirit of wisdom and revelation because Mo, uh, Joshua had that after Moses laid his hands on him, yet he had to be in the Word of God. Amen. All right. So now you see this uh, word for meditate in Hebrew is haga, but the word meditate in the Septuagint, the Greek version of this verse is melatao. Now, why do I say that? Because there is a counterpart in the writings of Paul in the New Testament. In the New Testament, in 1 Timothy 4, it says here in verse 15, meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them that thy profiting may appear to all. Meditate upon these things. Give yourself wholly to them that thy profiting may appear to all. The word meditate here is the word melatao. Ob obviously, this is the New Testament and it's in Greek. But the reason I'm showing the, uh, 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 both verses from the Old and New is to show you that this verse here is actually Hebrew. In the Hebrew, it will be haga to mutter upon these things. And what things are this? The context tells you is the Word of God. Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. The Word of God, listen to preaching, listen to teaching, neglect not the gift that is in thee, which is the gift of teaching for Timothy, Paul was telling him. It was given to him by, when the elders laid hands on him and uh, by prophecy. Meditate upon these things, God's Word. Give yourself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all. Notice that every time God's Word, church, listen, I find that every time God's Word talks about meditation, there's always a benefit. There's always a blessing. And in Joshua 1, 8, it says what? The blessing. For then you shall make your way prosperous. You will make your way prosperous. When you meditate on God's Word day and night, you will make your way prosperous and you shall have good success. Wow. What about Psalms 1? It says in Psalms 1, but his delight is in the law of the Lord and in his law, he meditates day and night. Amen. When you find the word, the law of the Lord, it's not specifically referring to just the Ten Commandments. Amen. The is the definite article. The law of the Lord refers to the entire, in this context here, the, the five books of Moses, the law of the Lord. Amen. The instruction, the Word of God. Amen. So you meditate on the Word of God and your delight is in the Word of God and you haga on it day and night. What's going to happen? He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water if one river is running low, there are rivers, my friend, rivers of water. How refreshing. Hey, how verdant. Hey, Amen. How, how luscious this tree is that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also shall not wither. And here it says, whatever he does shall prosper. Just like Joshua 1, 8. Amen. You shall make your way prosperous and you shall have good success. And here it says, when you meditate on God's Word, whatever you do, prospers. It doesn't matter what your occupation is, whether you're a doctor, a teacher, a homemaker, amen? Just whatever you do, prospers. You know, one of the uh, biggest uh, cries that people have today, I hear it in the Spirit, and I hear it also physically, uh, you know, people around, I don't know what to do. 
they have a situation. I don't know what to do. I just don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. You know, they are in this, in this predicament. I don't know what to do. In a financial predicament, I do not know what to do. They are in a marital uh, problem. I do not know what to do. And really, friend, the answer is the wisdom of God. Amen. Christ is made unto you wisdom. Amen. And the way it manifests is pray to God. Amen. Ask God for the spirit of wisdom and revelation, the eyes of your heart to be enlightened. We need to see, observe, meditate on God's Word. And, and the other way that God has just shown us here is to meditate on His Word. Take a verse of Scripture. It might not be pertaining to your, your believing God for health or healing. You're believing God for a breakthrough in your addictions. Amen. You're believing God to uh, uh, restore your marriage. Whatever it is, take a verse of Scripture. It can be a verse of Scripture like what we read just now, Psalms 1, verse 3. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season. Can you see it? Can you see it? Has this po uh, portion of God's Word given you a hazon vision? Can you see yourself like a tree planted, evergreen, ever healthy, ever strong, forever young? Amen. Whatever you do prospers. Amen. Can you see yourself in that way? Amen. If you can, if you have eyes to see, that is the hazon vision, my friend. That's the purest kind of hazon vision because it came from God's Word. And God's Word is full of Hazon visions. And, and, and you know, I, I feel like, like uh, this, this is a storehouse. It's a storehouse. God wants you to, to break it open, break the shell. Unfolding of His words, the opening of His words gives you light. Amen. Gives you wisdom. Gives you length of days. Hallelujah. When the wisdom comes. And give you riches, honour, pleasure, and peace. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, sometimes I feel like David in Psalms 119, 162, where he says, I rejoice at your word as one that finds great spoil. You know, in those days, they were going to battle and their reward will be the spoils of war, where they get the, the, the sheep, the, 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 the cattle, the gold, the silver, the weapons. You know, I, I rejoice at your word, David says, as one that finds great spoil. Do you feel the same way? Happy is the man that finds wisdom. Amen. Her merchandise is better than silver and the gain thereof than gold. Hallelujah. Amen. The same excitement you feel like, you know, there's a new uh, 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 kid in town in the stock market, you know, a, a company that's unknown, but you invested in it. And the next thing is the biggest thing. It's the biggest thing to ever hit, you know, uh, the market. Amen. But you just found great spoil. The same feeling you have, Amen. You ought to have it even more for God's Word. Because down here, the gain thereof is better than gold. And the merchandise of it is better than silver. All the things you, could, you can desire are not to be compared with her. Amen. Her price is far above rubies. Hallelujah. Amen. This excerpt is brought to you by josephprince.com. To get the full message, visit josephprince.com.